Hey everyone, Scott here again. Uh, we just did a video on a uh, sick hyperface when everything was working normally and everything was going the way it was supposed to. This video is going to show what happens when a sick hyperface encoder is bad and the steps we're going to take to, to get around that and what to look for. So my drop downs are still serial, sick, hyperface, four pole pairs off the motor and auto identify. I'm going to go ahead and hit start collection here. Okay, so we have encoder power. I'm going to switch to signal characteristics. And I'm going to start rotating this encoder shaft, uh, but a couple things you can notice right off the bat. Going very slowly, that sine wave does not look good, uh, does not look healthy. You can see the revolution count is jumping around. If I go very, very slowly, my mechanical and electrical angle are moving congruently. The quick report is showing deflection faults. And even at the standstill, my sink is blipping in and out. So without moving the encoder, it's not synced. You can also see it's skipping through the channels way too quickly uh, because that revolution count is not accurate. If I look at the deflection faults, and looking at that cursor, you can see that the encoder is not keeping position. So that kind of jumping around, not only for deflection faults, but for amplitude strength it looks like it's it keeps cutting out if you see that so none of which should be happening And comparing my sine and cosine signals, you can see that they're not clean like that good encoder that we did in the last video was. You can see the waves are kind of choppy. Uh, the signals are a little distorted. And you can see my voltage is showing out of range. Yeah, oh, that was really bad right there. My amplitude strength is bad. Um, <laughs> honestly, even before generating a report, I would not bother anymore with this encoder. But let's see what the report says. Okay, so our overall score is just shy of 57%, uh, overall condition not fit for application. And if you see here, it's primarily because of the sine channel and the cosine channel. So the signal strengths on the knots, uh, again, sine knot and cosine knot for sick hyperface is just a reference voltage, a flat reference voltage. And then the data and data knot channels, those signal strengths were fine. It's the sine and cosine that are really bad to the point where it's losing position, not being able to keep track. <clears throat> Deflection errors, voltage fault, 
heavy voltage faults on cosine, many deflection errors on the cosine channel. And you can see as I was rotating the encoder shaft, um, the encoder itself actually threw an error, single turn position unreliable since they're not adjusted. Um, so this encoder is clearly bad. So let's go over to memory. ID the encoder. Nope. So as bad as this encoder is, uh, the encoder itself is only intermittently throwing faults out. So don't rely just on if the encoder is throwing a fault, if an encoder is good or not. Uh, if you can physically see this encoder, um, it, it's rough. There's corrosion on the housing. Uh, the bearings are rough. Um, it, it's, it's not in good shape. Despite that, I could still read the memory that's stored onto it. Then I can save that memory file and then move it over to a good encoder. So I'll do that quickly. All right. So here's another SRM encoder, and this one is blank. This does not have any memory loaded onto it. So if I click read data, it tells me expected fields not found. So I can take the memory file from that bad encoder right here, write it to the good encoder, and then install it into the motor and go and perform my alignment like we did in the previous video. So that's what a bad encoder looks like. Uh, the next uh, hyperface series we're gonna do is what if there is no encoder or motor specific memory stored onto the encoder, how to perform alignments uh, and how to add them in that situation. All right, thanks for watching.